So I'm Andy, and thank you for the introduction. Uh, I am working at Kairos XR out of California. We've been working on some interesting training applications, and so I thought with my uh, seven or eight minutes here, I would go through kind of the step-by-step -step checklist that we go through when we bring on a new client. So when a client approaches us, the first thing we need to do is understand what are their training needs, right? Who is the end user? What is the use case? So this, is, this starts with identifying what's currently being done in their training um, and what are the friction points, right? And what can XR provide that traditional training cannot? Um, you know, how, proficient, how proficient are users with technology that are gonna be um, using these training applications? Um, what is the cost? Of course, what is the budget? Um, and then a super important one is finding out who are the key stakeholders, right? Who are the decision makers? Who do we need to convince that XR is the solution, right? Oftentimes, the first contract with the client is going to be some sort of proof of concept. That proof of concept goes well, you meet the KPIs, there's potential for iteration. But identifying who makes that decision is very important. You want to do that up front. Uh, next, you want to set the expectations. What does success mean, right? Um, you want to define that upfront with the client, come around and make an understanding. Um, also around fidelity, right? We know that fidelity is it's important, but things like interaction, right, and uh, onboarding tend to be more important for these experiences. And then, of course, you don't want to overpromise, right? You want to make sure that you leave your client happy and satisfied with what they have. So, don't overpromise what you do. Um, Go through the landscape with your client, right? A lot of people don't know outside of the industry. They don't understand what the difference between AR and VR and MR and all this stuff is, right? So it's important to walk your client through uh, what the different options are, what the benefits and drawbacks of each are. And then this ties into uh, defining success. What are the core analytics, right? We all know the ROI is very important. Um, the other one is KPIs. And for training, that's comprehension, retention, and ultimately mastery. The next step, generative research, right? So we're gonna identify any competition that this uh, client may have, um, and then we wanna show that to the stakeholders, right? That's gonna help build confidence in what we're doing. We wanna see if there's any current XR solutions out there. If there is, was it effective? If it was, why was it effective? If it wasn't, why did it fail? Then, once we've done that initial round of research, we wanna jump into interviews, right? So this is a super important step. We wanna jump in, uh, to the interviews with the users, other people in the industry, anyone you can make contact with and is willing to give you five or 10 minutes of their time. Uh, so some of these charts here um, are showing you some examples of um, some of our research that we got from interviews with uh, potential students for a class we built that with Unity. So this is an XR training course, in this case for automotive, right? So hopped on the phone with a bunch of different people in the automotive industry, figured out what softwares they know so we can focus on teaching similarities um, and how familiar they are with Unity. So we had kind of a pretty even split in this case. And this really saves your client time um, on their end because you don't need to ask them all these questions on the phone or in a meeting. Once you have that research done and you understand the user, it's time to jump into actually creating the application, right? And this starts with a storyboard. So you can see here down on the right, this is an example of a storyboard for an automotive client we had. So we always start with the KPIs on the left, write those up, what are we trying to meet, right? Key performance indicators. Then we jump into the storyboard and then we map those KPIs to each frame in the storyboard. So we know that by the time we are done with our application, we are going to meet those KPIs, right? Identify how the user will navigate through the experience and then at this point, it's also very important to bring the client into this um, storyboarding and bounce it back and forth with them. This helps keep everyone aligned. The other thing that we've noticed is that onboarding is super important, right? People have not tried XR. So um, throwing them in a headset, I'm sure you guys have all experienced this, you throw someone in, they're like, it's not working, I don't know what's going on, and depending on what it is, you can't, you don't know what they're seeing, so then you have to take the headset off, you have to jump in there, walk them through. That can be a total pain, right? So by creating an onboarding process, an onboarding sequence in your application, um, you allow the user, the end user, to learn by doing. Um, it's important to include general XR onboarding. So if it's VR, here's the controllers, they're tracked, moving around, here's the buttons, triggers, things like that. Um, plus application-specific onboarding. So how do you use your training application that you're developing? 
this tends to be the difference between a magical great application and someone taking the headset off and being, well, technology's not there yet. It didn't work for me, right? We've all heard that. Then we jump into the design and the development, right? We tend to focus on UI up front as that is kind of the first thing that a user will see when they jump in. Usually it'll tie the whole thing together. Um, multiple different types of UI, depends on the technology. In this case, uh, the example again is for an automotive client. Uh, we have, uh, this is using the HTC Vive. So, you know, that's the main form of information delivery. And this can be the difference between a bad application and one that looks very professional. Um, thinking about the environment, what are you trying to accomplish with your training? What is the client's needs? The environment dictates a lot of the look and feel. Uh, then we want to jump into the architecture, building this thing out, right? So uh, you can see this image right here is from an application called Mural. It's essentially like online sticky notes. You can just move them around. You do the same thing on, on a board with sticky notes, but this way wastes a lot less paper. Um, we spend a lot of time architecting up front and then uh, executing the architecture. It saves a lot of time down the road, right? If you don't know how it's all gonna fit together as you're building it, uh, there's high potential for bugs and fixes and delays in development time. So we kind of run with this slogan of architect twice, code once. Um, and then we also want to think about a future-proof design, right? A lot of clients that we talk to are worried about building an application now in 2019, and come next year there's going to be a whole new slew of hardware, right? A bunch of improvements, and what we built them is going to be out of date. So we want to think about how we can build a plan with them, whether that's an iteration plan or thinking about hardware that's on the horizon uh, and how we can integrate that into their application. User test, right? Everyone knows this one. Uh, you want a user test early and often. As soon as you start, you can begin the user testing. Uh, you want to focus on comprehension and retention. Again, tend to be the key KPIs for uh, training applications. And then the standard discoverability accessibility, bugs, and general QA. Then once we're done with our user testing, we take time to separate kind of the anecdote-based suggestions um, from the actual data-driven uh, improvements, right? We let the user feedback drive the iteration, but we don't let it control it, right? So if one person says, you know, this feature would be nice, we're not gonna burn a whole week implementing that feature unless we've ran that by the client and other users. So we want to really confirm the improvements before we spend time making them. Uh, and then we break it down into uh, the features that we need, right? We break it into must-haves, nice-to-haves, and stretch. Um, must-haves are we're going to meet the KPIs with the must-have goals. Nice-to-haves are, you know, nice-to-have. And stretch goals usually will fall into a later iteration. Um, we share, again, we share this with the client. And then lastly, uh, we want to evaluate, right? So when we deploy, we want to make sure that we are indeed meeting the KPIs, um, but we also want to make sure that we maintain the relationship. We don't want to just hand them this thing, you know, take the money and run, right? We want to build this relationship with the client. So that means talking about IT support, um, at what level are you going to maintain that relationship and help them with the technology, um, classic feedback survey, um, and generally just making sure that your client is satisfied. And then at the end, we do our retro, build the case study, um, helps build credibility and reflect on the process and what you can do better. So with that, thank you. And there's my email, and I'll be around as well for any questions. Thank you.